dreams is this somehow connected to sihr? When? If you dream you're being fed, you're eating in a dream. If you dream that you're eating or somebody's feeding you, is this from shaitan? Is that a bad thing? Is that a sad thing? No. Um, if it tastes the... good, <laughs> continue. Okay, there, there is a question about ta'weeb and you covered it already. The person asked, is azimah tasat to call ta'weeb here? Uh, allowed in Islam, please give hadith as proof. I think we looked at ta'weeb already. Um, what are the signs someone is a witch and that they work with jinn? It's difficult to say what the signs may be because people have been attacked and harmed on the basis of descriptions of, of this type where you go to somebody, an Amil or whatever, and he tells you, it's your mother-in-law. And of course, she's been giving you a hard time, right? It's your mother-in-law. She's the one at it. No. Those people who tell you, I know some people tell me, listen, you know, we sent our picture to Maulana so-and-so, and he said, I have three jinns on me, one which was on me from the time I was six years old, another one which was on me from the time I got to be 15, and, you know, a recent one which caught me. From a picture. No, this is nonsense. If somebody tells you that, run in the other direction. Um, are Afrit the strongest of all other jinn? The Afrit is the strongest. No, Afrit is just a category among the jinn. The more powerful jinn are referred to as Afrit. Do we open a portal for the jinn by listening to music? We open portals for the jinn by committing sins. Whether it's music, haram music, etc. Or any other acts, we weaken ourselves at that time and this is where the evil among the jinn may attack us. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody is attacked by the jinn, that they were involved in sin. So it's not like uh, one and the other are completely connected because Prophet Muhammad was affected and surely he was not engaged in any major sins, etc. Uh, the question verbatim says, are jinn also possible to have children with you? I mean, So Can a male jinn impregnate a human female? I am of the opinion, I support the opinion which says no. <laughs> Just as if somebody claims you can have relations with a cow and get a, a child. It's nonsense. These are two different species. But we do have ulama of the past who said it is possible and some even debated is it legal for you to get married to them imam malik even spoke about it and he said but you know if we allow this you know then any woman comes pregnant you know and is taken before the court she can just say it was a jinn <laughs> so um what if you can't find the charm what do you do in that case? If you can't find the charm, then you move on to the next things. You start the rukya or you use truffles, medicinal means or whatever. The charm is just for those who are able to find out about the charm. Is seeking help with jinn considered shirk, even if it is done to achieve some good? Seeking aid and help from the jinn is shirk. It involves shirk. It's only going to come along with shirk. Now the jinn might trick you, might uh, delude you into thinking they're a good jinn. You know, 
here is some Quran. And you might think, ah, oh, this is a good jinn teaching me Quran. But know that they are prohibited to contact us as we are prohibited to contact them. Those who might contact our world and give the impression that they are good, know that they are liars. Prophet ﷺ described them as saduqa wa huwa kathub. They are insistent and compulsive liars. I've seen some raqi on YouTube doing ruqya and they have conversations with the jinn in order to extract the spell to get the jinn to give up location of tied knots to release the spell. Others ask the jinn about illuminati. Is this permissible? Yeah, we even have a book which was written by uh, Wahid Bali who had a conversation with the person possessed and the jinn was describing to them the world of the jinn, the kind of homes they lived in, the animals that they rode, and the this and the that, a whole book. But the Prophet ﷺ said, they are liars. We cannot depend on anything that comes from that world. They're lies. Some Rockies use a method called jinn capturing. Is that allowed? I think I've talked about that already. Jinn catching is bogus, fake. Can jinn shape shift? Shape shifting jinns. Yes, we said that in the beginning that Allah has allowed some among them to take human form or take animal form. Is it true that the Shia practices heavy sihr, especially encouraging the followers to wear ta'weez? I don't know. Um, Mr. Yasin has a mic there at the back. Is there anyone uh, who has a question? Uh, <coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum I would like to find out from the Sheikh the definition of jinn according to the Holy Quran. It has, it has got a realistic understanding and meaning, which means people that are skillful people that has extraordinary ability, people that are hidden from public, such as uh, influential people, like prime ministers, like doctors, like actors. So the definition of jinn, according to my understanding of the Quran, are actually a hard reality, it's not fiction. And when the Quran also talks about jinn, it could be microscopic germs. Because 200 years, 300 years back, when someone was affected with, uh, with uh, 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 fits, epileptic fits, and people used to say he was possess, uh, uh, possessed by the jinn. So we should actually reread the Quran to try to understand the reality of the Quran, not try to build it on fiction and fairy tales. Well, that doesn't sound like a question at all. It sounds like you exposing or giving us your side of the story. Uh, this is not a new opinion. Uh, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in his uh, translation of the Quran into English way back in the early 20s, uh, 1920s, he did uh, an, an, uh, an appendix and added this line of argument which others have shared. But the mass of Muslim scholarship for the last 1400 years rejects that argument. And the evidences for the existence of the jinn as being another set of creatures, whether it is verses from the Quran or clear statements of the Prophet Muhammad etc., is overwhelming. Overwhelmingly proves, proving that the argument that the jinn are microbes or they are strangers or other terminologies is not in fact correct. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question was, um, oh, oh my, okay. So my question was, Chef, that you mentioned that um, only shaitan can control jinn. 
And I wanted to know um, how that affects the mechanics of sigur. So uh, when when you have when someone engages in sigur, um, are you sending a gene to that person, or how does it work? If you Come know, again. Um, earlier on, you mentioned that only. How does sigur work? Yeah. Allah knows best. Okay. How does one deal with the fa with family members who are the ones regarded as the local dukum? Uh, What's that again? Dukum. <laughs> dukum. Yeah. Okay. So what? What do you do if your family member is the go-to person? Well, if it turns out that your family member is a magician, dukur or whatever you call that, <laughs> uh, if you're in Islamic state, then you take them, turn them in. Turn them in. If you're where you are, where the society does not consider this to be a crime, then the best you can do is just to ostracize them. Try to guide them, to advise them, discourage them, and in the end, if they don't want to stop, then you have to ostracize them. This is a, this is a point at which it would be permissible for you to break family ties. Um, I have a question uh, regarding um, priests in churches and uh, priests um, in churches where they have huge gatherings and um, where they heal people. So I have a colleague that works with me and she says that this one priest healed a woman that was in a wheelchair for 11 years. How does that happen? Is well, that gender related? Yeah, or? yeah, I understand what you mean. I mean the faith healers, they call them faith healers, they're very popular in the States and even in the third world they come here, especially um, in places like India and, and all over Africa you have people doing this. Uh, and you find Muslims lining up also, waiting for their turn. Uh, reality is that in most cases it's fake. It's planned ahead. They come in on the wheelchair, and he comes and puts his hand on their forehead, and they all of a sudden they get up and they start walking, they go through the motions, and, but it's fake. You have many cases of it exposed as fake. But this doesn't mean that there may not be some cases that have a reality to them, right? Where the illness may be connected to the brain and things connected with the brain and uh, such action of the jinn can influence or affect the body and give the person some abilities that they didn't have. Allah knows best, but as I said, in most cases, it's fake. It's just a trick. Um, can Sihir Kuz want to end up on, the, on uh, drug, to be a drug addict? Can, oh, okay, that sounds like a nice excuse. <laughs> you know, very convenient. You know, I'm an addict because of magic. Well, not likely, but it could be indirectly that those around you may draw you into it. Those may be influenced from evil sources, whether it's from the world of the jinn or ins, min al jinnati wan nas. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of the jinns and humans. Shayateen al insi wal jinn. You know, Allah talks about them, that from the shayateen, the devils, they are human beings. We are human devils. If you are alone with someone, and he becomes possessed, what is the first thing you should do? Run. <laughs> get help. Run and get help. 
I have been for Rukia and Rukia was performed in my home. Still my problem persists. My children are affected both physically and their behavior. Also my workplace and any revenue earned is affected. What can I do? Well, I think you should just follow the prescriptions of the Prophet ﷺ, you know, whether it is, you know, making the adhan in your home or reading the various ruqa which he gave, Surah Al-Fatiha and the Mu'awadatan, etc., etc. Use what the Prophet ﷺ has given. There is plenty. There is enough there that you don't need to go elsewhere. So, you know, this is my general advice. Um, for people who are possessed or affected, at the same time, know that if you are patient with it, it is also purification from sin. So don't lose hope. Use what the Prophet ﷺ has given us, and inshallah, it will be beneficial. Pardon? Uh, I just learned that everything that was told to me about jinn is not proper, like the Tawis and certain things that people are doing, and these are from trusted people, and I've seen jinn catching myself, so if that whole thing was fake, then who do you trust? <laughs> if it's like trusted people in our communities. And, but my question actually is to just clarify, is sleep paralysis and jinn connected? Is sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis. Jinn created. It could be, it could be related to it, you know. Personally, my own experience uh, of having what they call sleep paralysis, for me was a wake-up call that, you know, there is God. When I was a non-Muslim contemplating about Islam. It became for me evidence that, hey, I didn't get out of this state by myself, you know? Nobody could help me. So, there's got to be a real God. Once a genie is forced out of a person, is there a risk of it possessing someone else that is present in the room? Oh, these are all possibilities, you know? We can't say no. And we can't insist on yes. Allah knows best. Sheikh, does, uh, Sheikh, do you get good and bad genes in females and male genes? Good and bad? Yeah. We know that. They Just have a to choice. Just clarify, um, can any, so no humans can see jinn and can children see jinn? No, you know, there are some animals the Prophet ﷺ spoke about dogs and donkeys braying at night, in the night, not every time a dog barks or a donkey brays, but in the night if you hear, he said, if you hear a, a donkey or mule braying, that's its noise it makes, he, <laughs> whatever it makes, and the uh, dogs barking, if you hear that in the night, uh, know that they have seen a jinn. So they have the ability to see the jinn. And it's not strange in the sense that, you know, dogs, we have a whistle. You can blow this whistle. Dogs hear it, nobody else hears it. Right? The dog whistle. So, in the same way that their ears are able to pick up things we can't pick up, it's not surprising that perhaps their eyes are also able to see things that we can't see. Um, the sister or brother uses a term called blockages. Please advise on how to handle severe blockages, such as walking into a client's office with already negative energy, and over and above you are not succeeding and suffering depression, which affects the family. Wife and children dreaming of snakes and spiders and actual snakes in the house on more than one occasion. You can't complete it. Well, as I said, all of this, 
we just follow the advice of the Prophet ﷺ and do what he told us to do. We don't need to go to any other sources, any other uh, quacks and others who are out there offering all kinds of solutions. And it's just business. It makes a good business. People make a lot of money out of people running to them to get uh, treatment. But they're in fact getting mistreatment rather than First treatment. Um, there's a question, Sheikh, can jinn fall in love with a human and then cause marital problems? Well, we talked about that earlier. Scholars did speak about that. They did uh, say that one of the factors for possession can be a love factor, you know, desire for control in one way or in that physical or physical related way. And you know, they have um, documented cases of women and men experiencing uh, sexual experiences and nothing was visible. Um, Sheikh, you mentioned that um, only 15% of cases are real. So well, this is what the exorcist said. So what do you, how do you know you really, you really are possessed? Well, you, whether you know or you don't know, you use the treatment which the Prophet Sallallahu gave. You know, um, it's not a, an area of, that is so precise that people can say exactly what is wrong with you. You know, it's just like when you come into a, a doctor and you tell the doctor, I'm feeling this and that, and they say, okay, They'll try this medicine. Then the medicine doesn't work. Okay, try this or increase the dosage or the, you know, it is not a precise uh, world relative to us. We don't have the ability to define precisely. We just use what the Prophet Sallallahu gave us and we put our trust in Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaykum I have two questions. The first question is Which is the best way to destroy and discard a ta'weez that has writing on it wrapped in plastic? Second okay, let me just answer the first one so I don't forget. Uh, burn it. Uh, the second question is a topic of orbs that you find on printed photographs like little circles. Is that gin related? The pro topic of what? Uh, orbs. Orbs. O R B E S. O R E E S? O R B. O R B S? E S. B E S? Orbs. Circles and photographs. Circles in photographs. Photographs and printed photographs. Could that just be dust or is it gins? It's not gins. That one I'm sure of. <laughs> but the other one, in terms of dust, etc., what it could have caused that, what could have caused it, Allah knows best. Uh, Sheikh, is the truth in the phenomena of UFO and extraterrestrials? Is this jinn? It might be. You know, where there are uh, an accumulation of cases where we can't find any uh, scientific explanations for what has taken place, it could be from the world of the jinn, you know, from the uh, evil jinn who would seek to reinforce in the minds of human beings who have disbelieved in Allah, disbelieved in the existence of God, and therefore have replaced that with belief in extraterrestrials. That since this was all an accident, it probably happened somewhere else in the universe. And since it probably happened somewhere in the, in the universe, they probably have sent you know, their people to come check us out. So, space people are real. The jinn is the easy explanation for us. If there were other beings in this world, in the universe, in Saturn or Pluto or whatever, other beings that would come to our world at some time in the future and influence and affect us, be sure that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would have told us about it. Allah would have informed him as he gave us all the information about Dajjal, Ya'juj, Ma'juj, the return of Prophet Isa, all the other things that were going to happen in the future. Why would he leave out 
aliens. Sheikh, I would like to talk, uh, to present two issues about two scientists from the West. That is psychiatry and uh, uh, psychoanalysis. Do these sciences actually benefit Muslims? Or is it only meant for the West? Uh, in the area of psychiatry, psychoanalysis, even psychology, there is a body of information which is based on clinical studies, etc. I do believe that, especially from the area of psychology, there is real benefit that can be taken in terms of counseling and things like this. And that's why in the Islamic Online University, we have also a bachelor's degree in Islamic psychology. So we believe that there is use there. But in psychiatry, etc., which is, uh, has less room for clinical analysis and more from theories, Freud, etc., which are stuff just coming out of their heads, you know, explaining where God came from, and you know, it's filled with, with uh, a lot of kufr. You know, that uh, psychiatrists are among the well-known body of quote-unquote scientists who seem to be atheists. You know, so much of their teachings, their thoughts, their reflections coming from that perspective are of little use to uh, the Muslim world. But where there is benefit, where scientists you know, connected to that field, Islamically conscious, see benefit, then we take out of it. Because it doesn't mean everything there is false and unreal. Because were it the case, even non-Muslims wouldn't be relying on it. But because there is a real element to it, we can always take what is real, what is useful, and leave what is irrelevant and harmful. Inshallah. Inshallah, I have two questions on the sister side. Okay, Sheikh. So you mentioned that there is the case of temporary possession where information is fed to the medium from the jinn. So I would just like to confirm if people, if those mediums actually call upon the jinn. As you said, that we have no power over them and we can't see them either. So do those people, like, I don't know. Um, like call for the jinn, or what happens in those cases where information is fed? Like have a connection with the, the medium. How do people make, make connection with the, connection with the jinn? Yeah. Yeah. Call them up or what? I don't want to reveal that secret. <laughs> now, um, actually, we know from the books, Shamsul Ma'arif, this is a classical book for making connection with the jinn. It's very commonly used in North Africa, in Morocco, etc. Shamsul Ma'arif. It's a book of shirk. What they're telling you to do there, you want to make contact with the jinn, you know, read the Quran backwards. Urinate on the Quran. All kinds of nasty, filthy things. This is what seems to be throughout the pages of those texts. And it may very well be that if one commits some acts of sacrilege, this may open a door to access to that demonic world. Allah knows best. There are many uh, repeated questions, so uh just going to end up with the last three. Would you say that there are people that Allah has given the gift to see jinn? No. Um, Sheikh, is there a difference between the jinn Abi Sulaiman spoke to and the jinn we are discussing now? Same jinn. Um, can someone curse you? 
They can invoke Allah's curse on you. Whether it will come into effect or not is with Allah. Sheikh, um, can one burn to burn like food at home and to expel evil effects? No. Burning of incense is not known to drive away the jinn, nor the use of garlic. Some people who use garlic and other things like this. Uh, what we have from Rasulullah wasallam, as I said, is kifaya, is enough. Just stay with what the Prophet wasallam taught. If you don't have a source which says that Prophet wasallam did this or said this, and it's from an authentic text, etc., then leave it. Better to stay as far away from it as possible. My children, two and three years old, at the time started seeing someone in our house since Ramadan last year. They complain that the man, quote unquote, is hurting them. Does this mean our home is affected by jinn? Again, Allah knows best. Assume that there is something evil uh, and try to correct it by using what the Prophet ﷺ gave. I will say that, uh, just on a personal note, my own personal experience in um, giving dawah to my mother, you know, for her to eventually accept Islam, uh, after about 21 years of trying to give her dawah, and when I asked her why she decided at this point, after I basically gave up, why she decided to accept Islam. She said, one of the reasons, she said, was, you, you know when you came to visit me in Jiddah, she was in Jiddah with my father, they were teaching there, and um, I told you that there was a, an evil presence in the house. She expressed that she had seen something moving, but it was not clear, not visible, some kind of shadow type thing. And so what she did, she was a Christian, she knitted a cross and she put it over her door, but she said it didn't go away. But when you came and I told you about it and you read from the Quran, I read Surah Al-Baqarah, it stopped. That was like, hey, this Islam has something real with it. So, Alhamdulillah. Okay, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. I want to know if it, what, what does the Sheikh say is the difference between the shaitan and the jinn? What's the difference between shaitan and the jinn? Yeah. Shaitan was a jinn. So, one and the same. Shaitan and the jinn is the same. Yeah, shaitan is from the jinn. Shaitan is the name given to this particular uh, individual from among the jinn. So we're not saying that every jinn is shaitan, but shaitan was a jinn. So every shaitan is a jinn. Huh? Every shaitan is the jinn. It's a jinn. Every shaitan is a jinn? Yeah. In general, but the Prophet ﷺ referred to shayateen al insi wal jinn. So he said even amongst the people, there are shayateen, shaitans, devils. So the term shaitan is used in a general sense, as evil people, we can say this is a shaitan, referring to both human beings and the jinn. And then there's shaitan, which is a term used for the leader, some people say, of the jinn, or the first of the jinn, as Adam was the first human being, uh, Iblis was the first jinn. Allah knows best. We don't have proof to establish that. Shukran, Sheikh. one. Well, inshallah, this will be the final question, Sheikh. Um, we just want to know what the Islamic stance is on uh, cupping, and is it recommended for spiritual cleansing? Cupping. Yeah. Cupping is from the Sunnah. Prophet Sallallahu had it done, and he encouraged us to use it as a treatment for ourselves. We'd just like to thank each and every one who sent the question. If we didn't cover your question, it was either covered by Dr. In the talk or there were similar 
questions posed. Um, the organizers just asked me to make two uh, announcements, inshallah. Um, there are copies of Ibn Taymiyyah's essay on the jinn that the uh, Sheikh uh, translated and abridged. And it's quite old copies because you see the Sheikh is uh, enrolled at uh, Wales University. So the copies are from the, the 90s. But is, there are copies available at the back that you can take um, semi-free. You can give a donation uh, at the back to one of the organizers, inshallah. And then um, there are still some tickets available for the dinner tomorrow. You can speak to Brother Thabit there at the back. He's raising his hand. Uh, you can purchase tickets for tomorrow's event from Brother Thabit. Barakallahu feekum. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi.